Well, there you go, a typical manic back to school morning. Uh, I've dropped the kids off now, so it's sorted, but uh, the problem came, Sarah suddenly realized that on Friday, she hadn't put any fuel in the petrol car, which uh, she needed to get to work early this morning. So she had to take the leaf, leaving me with an empty petrol car. Uh, and uh, then I had the race of getting the kids to school. And, um, oh goodness, it's expensive, I'd forgotten. Uh, it, what's that over 70 pound for a tank of petrol that do me about 400 miles uh, certainly in this car anyway um, and it kind of proved the point again how convenient are electric cars even with the short range like my one just it, what does it take 10 seconds to unplug it in the morning jump in it and go and uh, you know 99% of the time that overnight charge is more than quite often a lot more than sufficient for what I do during the day. Anyway, today is all about getting back in a routine and getting sorted for while I'm away uh, the next few weeks, uh, just to make it a bit easier for Sarah. So with that in mind, I've got a few stories that have just been kind of bubbling away that I just want to talk about today. I'll just fit those in, in and around what I'm doing. Um, but the first thing I need to do is get in the gym. Uh, I haven't been here for about four weeks, just with the summer holidays and racing around, I completely got out of the habit. So I'm expecting this to hurt a lot. Right, there we go, feeling much more awake now. And um, my rock and roll day is gonna carry on by going to the shops to do some food shopping. <laughs> this is how I live. Uh, right, so while we're driving across, the first little story that um, caught my eye this week um, is around Mazda. Now I've always been a big fan of Mazda, uh, I've always liked their cars, their build quality is good and generally they're really economical and certainly their Skyactiv uh, range of engines seems to be just pushing that internal combustion engine to its absolute limits. Um, but they've been really reluctant to kind of enter the EV world um, in any way, shape or form. However, this week they've finally cracked and they've said that uh, by 2035, all of their vehicles will be electrified. Um, yeah, way to push yourselves. 2035 is a long, long way off. But um, I guess the interesting point, um, as far as they're concerned, is that by 2020, they said uh, one of their cars they're gonna have on the market will be a full EV. So that'll be really interesting to see their take on EVs and how they're going to develop a car. And hand in hand with that announcement from Mazda came one from uh, BMW who have said that by 2025 they're going to have 25 electrified vehicles in their range and of those 25, 12 of them will be fully electric. Uh, so obviously this, this whole kind of um, drive by governments to get uh, fossil burning vehicles out of towns and cities and countries as a whole is really starting to take effect now. And, all the motor manufacturers are having to revise their policies for the future. Now, one of the vehicles they've said is gonna be the X3, which when you consider Tesla, uh, Tesla are launching the uh, Model Y, uh, we've seen Hyundai uh, are gonna launch the Kona, and uh, Nissan, it looks like they've probably got a uh, small SUV type vehicle about to be released as well. So that's gonna be a really competitive market, and I think they're kind of that's the market that's going to really drive the interest because you know we see these vehicles everywhere and this is what people want not today you see that's the problem with the summer holidays and getting all out of a routine our kind of healthy eating that we normally do i mean we're not rigid to it but we we tend to try and eat reasonably well uh, summer holidays that all goes out the window exercise goes out the window and now you know this shop i've just done hopefully will get us back on track i'm going to spend the rest of the afternoon just sort of cooking and getting on top of things before i pick the kids up just so that the rest of the week can be nice and easy for us with that in mind, I'm going to get this shopping unpacked, I'm going to get myself some lunch, and then um, Uber, they've made a big announcement um, for all their drivers in London. Well, I have to say, this is going to fill me up. Um, right, so just before I eat this, um, Uber. So... 
Love them or hate them, they seem to be here to stay now. They're being quite aggressive in their sort of initiative to make um, cities greener. Now, uh, they've already done, had some other projects elsewhere in the world, but they've just announced in London, um, by 2025, all their drivers will be driving either electric or hybrid cars. Um, and they've kind of taken it one step further by saying, if uh, it's a, an Uber X car, which is kind of their premium service, uh, they want that to be an electric car by 2019. Now, they haven't just sort of told their drivers this is what you have to do, they're also giving them an incentive of £5,000 to do it. Now, I mean, that's a massive amount of money. They, the last count, I think, they seem to think there's uh, about 40,000 drivers in London um, signed up to Uber you know, to be a driver at the moment. So probably not all of them will do it, but I would imagine a, a, a fair amount will because come 2025, they won't be allowed to, to work for Uber. However you look at it, this is a good way of getting petrol and diesel cars off the road, uh, you know, a, a really large amount of them in inner cities where the air pollution is horrendous. I thought this was some really, really positive news and um, hopefully it's just another one of those steps from you know, these towns and cities and governments saying uh, we will get the uh, fossil fuel cars off the road to make the air better. Well there you go, there's another afternoon disappeared. I'm back at school just um, I'm a couple of minutes early so uh, yeah I thought here's my chance to just talk about the final thing I wanted to talk about today. And this is a question I've been asked several times and I've never really commented on it because to be honest, I don't know enough about it, but um, it's about hydrogen um, and hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. My take on it is that uh, obviously we, we needed a, a different platform to take over from uh, fossil fuel vehicles. Now we all wanted um, these vehicles to be the same as the fossil fuel vehicles, i.e. you go to a petrol station, you fill it up, you get you know, three, four hundred miles plus and um, keep everything very much the status quo. That was before we all started driving EVs. And now I think, well certainly I've realised that driving an EV is far more convenient than having a fossil fuelled car or a vehicle that I need to go to a fuel station to fill up. Um, the ease, as, you know, as I demonstrated this morning, to be able to get in your EV that's charged at home on your driveway and drive it off, uh, notwithstanding range, obviously that's a separate issue, but um, to do that is so much more convenient than going to a petrol station. So uh, kind of a lot of my um, knowledge is based on Toyota's um, attempts at hydrogen. They've obviously been mu very much at the forefront of it and they're still trying to push it and they still think that this is the future, albeit they start are starting just to waver towards EVs a little bit now. Um, so the car that they've got is the Marai, I think it's called something like that. Um, it can do, give or take, 300 miles to a um, tank of hydrogen. That's just about, just over 60 miles to the kilogram, which is the equivalent of a gallon of fossil fuel. Um, where it differs is the cost. At the moment, that kilo, which is the equivalent of a gallon, which will do you just over 60 miles, is about $15. Now, my leaf will do 60 miles and even on a bad day it'll cost me two pounds um there's a huge saving to be had you know uh, and that just for me just proves the point why spend all this extra money on something that um, is ultimately trying to replicate uh an antiquated system an antiquated way of um owning a car when we could be pushing towards the future and you know there's already cars out there which will do 300 miles on pure electric. I know at the moment they're quite costly, but yeah, within the next couple of years, they're gonna be available to all of us. Uh, I think there is a place for it. I think possibly your kind of, your HGVs, uh, maybe shipping, something like that, where you've got large containers that can hold this fuel and it might be more convenient for them. Um, as I say, I don't know the full ins and outs of it. So uh, anyway, if you've got any comments that you could help me understand, uh, am I way off the mark? Should should I be supporting it or um, are my views kind of based are they, are they spot on are they what ev everybody else is thinking so um let me know but for now I now need to go and pick the kids up and um, it's an evening of clubs and uh, sorting them out so I'm going to end the vlog there if you've enjoyed today's vlog then remember to like and share it and if you're not doing so already then subscribe to the channel and I'll see you again soon take care